the three railway engines. Once upon a time, there was a little engine called Edward. He lived in a shed with five other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. The driver won't choose you again, they said. He wants big, strong engines like us. Edward had been in that out for a long time. He began to feel sad. But then the driver and fireman came along to start work. The driver looked at Edward. Why are you so sad, he asked. Would you like to come out today? Yes, please, said Edward. So the fireman lit the fire and made a nice steam. Then the driver pulled the lever, and Edward puffed away. Peep, peep, he whistled. Look at me now. The others were very cross at being left behind. Away went Edward to get some coaches. Be careful, Edward, says the coaches. Don't bump and bang us like the other engines do. So Edward came up to the coaches very, very gently, and the shunter fastened the coupling. Thank you, Edward, said the coaches. That was kind. We are glad you are taking us today. He... He waited and waited. There was no whistle, no green flag. Peep, peep. Peep, where is that guard? Edward was getting anxious. The driver and fireman asked the station master, Have you seen the guard? No, he asked. They said, they asked the porter, Have you seen the guard? Yes, last night, said the porter. Edward began to get cross. Are we ever going to start, he said. Just then a little boy shouted, Here he comes! And there the guard was running down the hill with flags in one hand and a sandwich in the other. He ran to the platform, blew his whistle, and jumped into the van. Edward puffed, puffed off. He did have a happy day. All the children ran away of it as he went past and met old friends all at all the stations. He worked so hard that the driver promised to take him out again next day. I'm going out again tomorrow, he told the other engines that night in the shed. What do you think of that? But he didn't hear what they thought. For he was so tired and happy that he went to sleep at once. Edward and Gordon. One of the engines that Edward said was called Gordon. He was big and proud. You watched me this afternoon, little Edward, he boasted, as I rushed through with the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Just then his driver pulled the lever. Goodbye, little Edward, said Gordon as he puffed away. Look out for me this afternoon. Edward went off, too, to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a pull. Oh, 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 screamed the trucks. Whatever is happening? Then he would stop and the silly trucks would go bump into each other. Oh, 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 they cried again. Edward pushed them until they were running nicely. And when they weren't expecting it, he would stop. One of them would be sure to run on the other, tr on to the other line. Edward played till there were no more trucks and then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle. Gordon came puffing along very slowly and very crossly. Instead of nice, shining coaches, he was pulling a dirt coal trucks. A good strain, a good strain, a good strain, he grumbled. The shame of it, the shame of it. Oh, the shame of it. He went slowly, he threw, and the trucks clattering and banging behind him. Edward laughed and went to find some more trucks. Soon afterwards, a porter came and spoke with, to, with his driver. Gordon can't get up the hill. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up the hill and very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You're not trying, they told him. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy trucks hold an engine back so. If they were coaches now, couldn't sensible things that come quietly. That would be different. Edward's driver came up. We've come to push, he said. No use at all, said Gordon. You wait and see, said Edward's driver. They brought the train back down to the bottom of the hill. Edward came up behind the brake band, ready to push. Peep, peep, I'm ready, said Edward. Poop, poop, no good, grumbled Gordon. The guard blew his whistle and pulled and pushed as hard as they could. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it, puffed Gordon. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it puffed Edward. I can't do it. I will do it. I can't do it. I will do it. I can't do it. I will do it. They puffed together. Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. And before he realized it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill. I've done it. I've done it, he said proudly and forgot all about Edward pushing behind. He didn't want uh, wait to say thank you, but he ran so on so fast that he passed two stations before his driver could make him stop. Edward had pushed so hard that when he got to the top of, of 
Ducky was out of breath. Gordon ran on so fast that Edward was left behind. The guard waved and waved, but Edward couldn't catch up. He ran on to the next station. There was driver and fireman. They were pleased with him. And the, and the fireman gave him a nice long drink of water. And the driver said, I'll get out my paint tomorrow and give you a blue, blue coat of blue with red stripes. You'll be the smartest dungeon in the shed. The Sad Story of Henry Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. He went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and never came out again. The engine's name was Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he would not move. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flags till his arms ached. But Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I'm not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you, he said rudely. The passengers came and argued too, but Henry would not move. A fat director, who was pulling the train, the guard, get a rope. We will pull him out, he said. But Henry only blew steam at him and made him wet. The, they hooked the, the rope and all pulled, except for the fat director. My doctor has forbidden me to pull, he said. They pulled and pulled, but still, Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. The fat director said, One, two, three, push, but did not help. My doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last another train came. The guard waved his red flag and stopped it. The two engine drivers, the firemen, and two guards went and argued with Henry. Look, it has stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it will start again. <laughs> yes, but it will start again soon, said Henry. And what will happen with my green paint and red stripes then? So they brought another engine up, and it pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever it could. But Henry still stayed in the tunnel. So they gave it up. They told Henry, we shall build a wall in front of you and cut out a new tunnel. Now Henry can't get out. He watches the trains rushing through the new tunnel. He is very sad because no one will ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes. But I think he deserved it. Don't you? Edward, Gordon, and Henry. Edward and Gordon often went through the tunnel where Henry was shut up. Edward would say, peep, peep, hello. And Gordon would say, poop, poop, serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoiled his lovely green paint and red stripes. He was cold and unhappy and wanted to come out and pull trains too. Gordon always pulled the express, and he was proud of being the only English strong enough to do so. They were heavy coaches, full of important people like the fat director who had punished Henry. Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, 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 he panted. Tree truck, tree truck, trickety truck, said the coaches. Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in the front. In a moment, in a minute, he said, I'll poop, poop at Henry and would rush through it and into the open again. Closer and closer he came. When he, he was almost there, when crack, whee, he was in a cloud of steam and was going slower and slower. The driver stopped the train. What is happening? He asked. What has happened to me? asked Henry. I feel so weak. You burst your safety valve, said the driver. Can't pull the train anymore. Oh dear, said Gordon. You're going so nicely, too. Look at Henry laughing at me. Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Everyone got out to see Gordon. Humph, humph, said the fat director. I never liked these big engines. Who's going wrong? Send for another engine at once. Well, the guard went to find one. They uncoupled Gordon and ran him on to a siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. I'll come and try, he said. Gordon saw him coming. That's no use, he said. Edward can't pull the train. Edward poofed and puffed and pulled and pulled and puffed, but he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so, said Gordon rudely. Why not let Henry try? Yes, said the fat director. I will. Will you help pull the train, Henry? he asked. Yes, said Henry at once. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire. Some plate layers broke down the wall and put back 
the old rails, and when he had steam up, Henry puffed out. He was dirty, his boiler was black, and he was covered with cobwebs. Ooh, I'm so stiff. Ooh, I'm so stiff, he groaned. You'd better have run to ease your joints and then find a turntable, said the fat director kindly. Henry came back feeling better, and they put him in front. Peep, peep, said Edward. Poop, poop, said Henry. I'm ready. So, so, really. Pull hard, pull hard, puffed Edward. We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, puffed Henry. Pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it. And they puffed together. The heavy coaches jerked and began to move slowly at first, then faster and faster. We've done it together, we've done it together, said Edward and Henry. You've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, sang the coaches. All the passengers were excited. The fat director leaned out to wave at Edward and Henry, but the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat ate it for his tea. They never stopped till they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers all got out and said, Thank you. And the fat director promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like blue and red? Yes, please, said Henry. Then I'll be like Edward. Edward and Henry went home quietly on there. Way and help Gordon back to the shed. All three engines are now great friends. Wasn't Henry pleased when he, he had his new coat? He is very proud of it, as all good engines are. But he doesn't mind the rain now, because he knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run into tunnels, but to ask his driver rub him down the day's work is over. And that's the end.